Temperatures first, where we got temperatures about 107 degrees at its highest point, playing Genshin Impact for about 30 minutes or so. And I think that's the best I got in temperatures. Now let's move on to PUBG Mobile. Now, this is a game that can be graphically intensive. And some of you say, uh, you know, I can unlock it to 90 hertz, 120. I went with just the standard approach because that's what a lot of people do when they play PUBG Mobile, right? So we had PUBG Mobile on both the 6 and the 6 Pro, and it did play well. In terms of settings though, we're only able to achieve one of our two key settings. We're able to play on Smooth Extreme, and on Smooth Extreme, we're able to get 60 frames per second on both the Pixel 6 and the 6 Pro. So that's solid gameplay performance, as you would expect with every device we've used this year from either the Galaxy or the iPhone. Now, the one thing we could not do was play Ultra HD Ultra, which said it was not available. Now, this doesn't mean that the processor can't handle it. It just means it's currently not available from the developer. The performance is much lower and that might be some of the issues we're seeing here with some of the games I just mentioned, especially with PUBG and Genshin Impact, which is just quite important. But set that aside for a second. When it comes to the higher frame rates, does it actually meet up to those higher frame rate demands? And I can tell you, evidently it does. Of course, is Call of Duty Mobile. This is my starter for all bench tests. And with Call of Duty Mobile here, we have some really solid performance as you would expect. Now we have our settings maxed at everything high and we're able to play on both the 6 and the 6 Pro getting uh, 60 frames per second as you can see with our game bench uh, benchmark scores. So nice solid performance across the board and that was really good to see. So that's a good start, right? Great of course is Genshin Impact. Now Genshin Impact is a game that is graphically intensive and of course we downloaded it, we set it to the highest graphical setting at 60 frames per second. I maxed out everything which is what I do in every test and this is where things became quite shocking for me. So within the first five minutes of gameplay I started seeing just variable frame rates on screen while gaming using uh, the Pixel 6 Pro and also with GameBench. And you can see on GameBench that yes, the average frame rate was still staying steady, but it was variating between 28, 14, 30. Honestly, within the first five minutes, it dropped down from 60 frames per second down to, uh, you know, the mid 40s. And by the time I finished playing 30 minutes of gameplay of Genshin Impact on both the Pixel 6 and 6 Pro, I ended up in an average frame rate of 35 and 36 frames per second, respectively. So when it comes to battery life, this is where I would say currently right now, uh, I am still in the learning process of what that battery life really means. I would say on the Pixel 6 Pro, you're still gonna get solid battery life while gaming, uh, where I did play for a total of say maybe about uh, three to four hours on the device and I went from 100 to about about 60, about 65 percent. So take it as you will. I was playing a lot of Genshin Impact. I was playing a lot of PUBG on there. Um, so I wanted to play games that were more intensive in terms of graphical performance and would drain. While with the Pixel uh, 6 itself, uh, playing for around the same amount of time, I went from 100% down to roughly around 55.